Hello and welcome back to our third video of the introduction to programming and problem solving series. In this third lecture, we are going to look at pseudocodes as a representation of algorithms. In the previous lecture, we understood that pseudocodes are part or ways of representing our or that is step by step approach for solving a problem. So we, we are going to continue with pseudocodes and look at some examples of pseudocodes. Okay, so pseudocode is uh, a pseudocode is a method of writing our words in such a way that they may be easily followed and understood. Uh, pseudocodes are largely derived in simple English. Pseudocode is not an actual programming language, no. Um, as a result, it cannot be compiled or interpreted uh, into a program that can be executed. Yeah. Um, it uses simple shots or uh, simple English words sent us to uh, write code for programs before it is converted into a specific programming language. Okay, so that's okay. So, um, why are pseudocodes used or the importance of pseudocodes? One, um, they ease up code construction uh, because pseudocodes uh, tend to follow uh, programming uh, the principles, which we are going to look at later. Um, also, um, better readability, they tend to be easy to read as compared to codes. That's a good, um, deadly, um, it's a good middle point between flowchart and code. So pseudocodes are kind of like the middleman between flowcharts and codes. Um, basically having or having instructions, not taking a fixed form, but a way of um, explaining what a flowchart or what a code is in simple terms. Uh, easier bug detection and fixes because it's in uh, simple terms, it's very easy to uh, determine uh, errors or a way for uh, troubleshooting any problem that we have with our codes. You could tackle it from our pseudocodes. Um, pseudocodes are reasonably straightforward. So they are direct, they are fixed, they are, they are kind of clear, not ambiguous. So let's look at examples of pseudocodes. So this is uh, a pseudocode that is adding uh, two numbers. So in this pseudocode, um, pseudocode is a way of representing our code, as we've already stated. So in this particular pseudocode, we are looking at how we would add two numbers. First, I'm not forgetting that pseudocode is a representation of an algorithm as such. It's supposed to be finite, it's supposed to have an end, then a, a beginning, sorry, and then an end. Okay, it's supposed to be finite, clear, unambiguous. It's supposed to have a, a, supposed to have a solution also to our problem. So in this um, problem, we are trying to add two numbers. That is a problem. So uh, in order to solve the problem, um, if analyze the problem, uh, clarify what we need uh, or what is happening and then set our goals and it's our outcome and it's the sum of the numbers. And then uh, we choose this potential solution. So um, first we begin or start. Okay. Um, second, a number. So here we are saying that uh, we are declaring two variables here. Okay, we are declaring, when you say a variable, a variable is like a container. Okay, that stores data. So, we are declaring two variables. Variable first, the first container uh, has the name first number. Oh, the second container has second number. And then another variable here uh, called sum, which is going to keep the addition of these two numbers inside here. So, um, after... We output two. So we are writing a program here. So we are telling the outside world, input the first number. So uh, the next is input. We are saying that we said earlier that um, flowchart, uh, sorry, algorithms are supposed to have inputs and outputs. So here we output to the outside world. We are telling them that they should put in their first number. They input the first number here. So let's say we have one. One here. Then we tell them also output the second number. Then they output the, the input. Uh, sorry, we input the second number. Then um, they are going to input their second number, which is being stored. So we have two here, we have one here. And then we have another variable called the sum, where in this variable we are going to um, save or store the sum of the two numbers. So first we um, declare or initialize what um, um, the sum should contain. Okay, so the sum is supposed to be the first number plus the second number. So here we have sum, first number here plus second number. So one plus two, basically, it equals three. 
So this the the solution or the results here is saved me this variable called sum. Okay. And then after the output is brought out. So here we output sum. So you are you outputting what is here. So our output is going to be three because you have one here, we have two here. They add together, it becomes three. So when you come to the variable sum, the value that you are going to find there is three. Okay. All right. Then we end. Since we have already met our solution, or since we already have our solution, we end this. Okay, let's look at another example. So, um, I think this is a, a problem. The, the goal of or what we are seeking to do is that we want to calculate the area of a rectangle. So, the problem is every rectangle, we don't know the area. We want to know the area. We clarify the problem are looking at what is that, uh, what is happening. Um, probably um, we need it for something, or there is a part that is not well um, um, evaporated on. Then we come to defining goals. The goal is to uh, have or get to know the area of the rectangle here. So uh, then we come to potential solution. There are numerous ways that we could go about that. This is just a pseudo code representing a solution to that. So first, start. So we start here, begin here. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. Declaring variables. So one variable is the length, one variable is the breadth, yeah. Then one variable is the area. The n here is basically, or the numeric that we see here is trying to tell us that all the values that are supposed to go into this container. So we have container one, container two, and container three. Container one being the length, container two being the breadth, and container three being the area. What we are trying to say is that um, the values that are supposed to go here, the moment you see the numeric means that all the values that are that can come into this containers must be numbers. Okay. So then, um, fourth wise, we can we talk uh, the outside world to uh, enter the length of the rectangle. So here we are set or we input the length. So let's say the person says the length is two. When they say two, two is stored in this container or in the variable length that we are seeing here. Okay. Then we display also to the outside world to enter the breadth. So um, the outside world or the one the ESA is in the program is going to enter their number. So let's say here we have the number three. Three here. So the moment they enter three, the three comes into this container. So anytime you want to assess the breadth here, or anytime you call this or you want to see what is in, in this container, you're going to have that three here. Okay. And then we are saying that now the area, the formula for the area is going to be the length times the breadth. Okay. So area is going to be length times the breadth. As such, the container area is going to give uh, is going to keep the um, multiplication of two by three, or the multiplication of the length that's the breadth times the breadth. Sorry, so two times three here are the values here, so it's going to be six. Okay, then we display the area of the rectangle, which is what the area, and the area here is what six. So anytime we call the container A, what you are going to find it inside is of six. Okay, then we end it since we have a solution to our problem. Let's look at a um, few more examples. Then we are done with pseudocodes. Um, this is a pseudocode um, to help us find the largest number amongst a list of numbers. So here we have um, a list of numbers. Okay, list of numbers. For example, we could have three, five, one, nine, four. Okay, so we then third outside word. Okay, the largest number in the list. So before we we we, we are trying to say that this is what we are looking out for. Okay. So um, before we do that, we set the first number in the list as the largest number. So let's say for this list, you are going to set this as the largest number now. Okay. So if the current number, which is three, okay, is larger than uh, the largest number. Okay. So let's say first the the largest number here is so three. Okay. We set we set this. So this number is it larger than this? No, it's the same, right? So as such, three is still the largest number. Then we move on to the next number. Okay. Is this number here 5 larger than 3? If yes, then the largest number is now going to turn from 3 to what? 5. Okay, so if you have a change from 3 to 5. Now we come here. Is 1 greater than the current number, which is 5, which is the current largest number? No. So we still maintain this. Okay. Then we come here. 9. Is 9 greater than 5? Yes. As such, um, we are going to update the largest number to 9. Okay, so you are going to have 9 here. Okay, 9. Let me cancel this and then just have it here. And I have nine here as the largest number. Then we go to the next number in the list. Um, that is four. 
is four greater than nine? No, it means that nine still maintains its position. So then we return the largest number. We could say we output the largest number to be equal to nine. Okay, so this is another pseudocode. Let's look at and the last example of pseudocodes. Then we move on to flowcharts. Okay, so I'm calculating um, this pseudocode as to calculate um, the sum of a list of numbers. So we have a list of numbers and we are trying to add them all together. Okay. So um, input the list of numbers here. We input the list of numbers here. So for example, we have three, five, seven, two, four. Okay. So we are uh, going to output the sum of numbers. We are going to tell the user that um, the, the goal of the program or the outer, or what we seek to do is to output the list of the numbers here. That is what this is standing for. So first we, we set the sum to be equal to zero. Okay. Now for each number in the list, so let's use this list. One, two, three, four, five. We add the current number or that number, okay, to the sum here. So if the sum is zero, we go to the first number, which is three, we add it to zero. It makes it what? Um, three, yeah, zero plus three comes three. Then we go to the next number, which is seven. Uh, sorry, the next number, which is five. So five plus three, it becomes eight here. Okay, so we have eight here. Then we go to the next number. Because you are saying that for each number in the list, we add it to the current sum number. So now the current sum number here becomes three, here becomes eight. Okay. So now we have eight here. So then we go to the next number, which is seven. So we are going to add seven to the current sum, which is what? Eight. So seven plus eight is going to give us 15. So that is the current uh, value for sum number 15. Now the next number is two. We add it to 15. It becomes 17. So you add the two here to 15, it becomes 17. Then we, the last number here is four. We add the four to the current value of the sum, which is 17. It becomes what? 21. So the sum of the numbers, because there, there are no numbers left in the list, the total sum of the number is going to be 21. And then we output it out. So this value is going to be, or this variable, or this container is going to have the number 21. So that is it for pseudocodes. In our next video, you know, in our next lecture, I will look at flowcharts as means of representing algorithms.